You've all been asking for a theory on Mike from the TV show Total Drama. He's the guy who has a bunch of different personalities inside of his head, presumably because of dissociative identity disorder. You've all been asking for about a year now, and I understand why. It's a very theorizable topic, but there's actually not that much for me to solve or propose. There is, however, Mal, also known as the Malevolent One. Of the six personalities contained inside of this human, Mal is the psychopath. At one point, he even claims to be the original personality and spends a great deal of time flaunting his knowledge of their mind. In the end, spoiler alert, Mike and the other four kind personalities find a large metaphysical button and press it, resetting the mind, as they say. But what triggered this disorder to begin with? What is the purpose of of each personality and what is the truth behind Mike and Mal. I'm going to do a deep dive right now. Hello, I'm the Theorizer. Let's begin. This is confusing. I don't know what questions to answer yet or where to start, so I'll begin by briefly establishing each personality and then quickly running through some major scenes of importance. First, we have Mike, the main character. His whole personality revolves around his quirkiness and love of Zoe. Second, we have Chester, who's a frustrated old man that always pops up when Mike gets angry. Third, we have Svetlana, a European female gymnast who appears when physical dexterity is required of Mike. Fourth, we have Vito, a lady-loving male version of Anne Maria who appears whenever Mike's shirt comes off. Fifth, we have Manitoba Smith, who is simply Indiana Jones. Finally, we have the Malevolent One, a psychopathic being of pure chaos whose goal is to dominate Mike's mind and cause mayhem to all in the physical world. In Season 4, when we meet Mike, we start to learn of how his personalities are basically an irritant to his life. And over the course of this season, his disorder is dissected by Cameron, abused by Scott, and confused by Zoe. In the end, just before his elimination, Mike takes back his mind, putting the four normal personalities in their place, setting the stage for the long-suppressed Mal to make a comeback, and slowly eat away at his mind until Season 5, when he takes it over and locks all of the personalities, including Mike, in their own subconscious. In the end, the personalities find each other, but not before Mal has already ruined most of the other contestants on Total Drama and made it to the finale. While being taunted by Mal, the five normal personalities make their way to the center of the mind, where they push a button that resets everything, putting Mike back in control as he obliterates Mal and absorbs all of the other personalities. So the question is just this. What? Yes, indeed, what? What caused these personalities to come into being? How is there just a reset button? How does Mal know so much more than Mike? And how does he dominate their mind? Well, disorders such as these are most often caused by extremely abusive trauma inflicted at a young age to the individual in question. Given the nature of the human mind, it's also likely that these specific personalities came into being for specific reasons. So I guess we should look at how they are triggered. Chester is used to deal with anger and frustration, Svetlana can get out of a physically difficult situation, Vito can socialize extremely well and find popularity anywhere, Manitoba has the wits and common sense to get Mike through confusing times, and Mike himself is… meek. Kind, nice, meek, weak, normal. He serves no purpose. This is what finally allows me to definitively say that he is the original personality. Mal constantly taunts Mike, calling him just another personality. Mal calls himself the original, the one capable of easily taking over his mind, but Mike's normal personality is triggered only by living his life. His love for Zoe, his friendship to Cameron, his desires and wills. Mal, on the other hand, Mal serves a purpose and has a very distinct trigger. Mal, the evil personality, is a seriously effective defense mechanism. Mal himself, while pleading for his life in the end, even says that nobody will cross them with villainy in charge. And he's right. Mike himself acknowledges that these personalities serve a purpose when he says that Mal's a part of him he doesn't need anymore. So Mal truly is just another personality. He taunts Mike and dominates him, but in the end he 
he's just used to cope with extremely stressful situations. But with these other personalities, there's a pattern. You can see the progression. These personalities appear in the show in the same order they appeared initially in his mind. They all serve a purpose and also are encountered in this specific order when he finds them in his subconscious. Here's what I mean. Chester was the first. He's the oldest. His purpose was to cope with the anger Mike felt towards terrible things in his childhood. Svetlana is the second. Getting bullied and pushed around requires physical defense. Vito is the third. A person who can get on par with the people pushing Mike around. A systematic socialite whose personality is basically a direct mirror of the kinds of people bullying Mike. I'm not sure how a shirt coming off would trigger an anti-bullying mechanism, but it does. Perhaps being hung upside down or tied up in a stereotypical bullying type of way, or perhaps change room bullying, I don't know. But Vito is like a mirror of the people who cause these kinds of problems. Manitoba Smith is an interesting one, and is almost sort of an intellectualism to counter Vito's idiocy. A being who can maturely stand up for himself, figure things out, and explore situations. But I have no clue how a hat allows for this. Maybe the trigger has just since evolved from something more basic. Finally, Mal. Oh, this is where it gets interesting, because Mal is nothing more than the metaphysical embodiment of every other trigger. In a tough situation, Mike's mind will first try Chester. When coping with anger doesn't work because he's being physically hurt, Mike moves on to Svetlana. When he's being mocked for it and his reputation is stung as well, he moves up to Vito. When he's being accused of being too dumb, he uses Manitoba. Finally, when he's accused of being simply too weird, when his personalities are being bullied too, when all of his increasingly developed defenses fail, he flares with inner evil. Nothing stops this malevolent demon. In fact, Mal's abilities are so powerful and overbearing to the other personalities that he can go so far as to abuse them and mix them together. He can use their abilities to his own evil end, as we see him doing during the competition. During his teenage years, Mal ends up getting Mike sent to a juvenile detention center, and Mike implies that the psychologists there ended up getting rid of Mal. But only in Total Drama, the show that toxically mutates people, pushes them beyond their limits, and has magical moons that unlock deep-seated evils, can those psychological suppressions be completely undone. Mal is a mix of all other personalities inside of Mike's mind. It's why he can use them, drain them. He scolds like Chester, tears through things like Svetlana, has incredible social intelligence, merging the likes of Vito and Manitoba, creating a psychopathically manipulative mastermind. When they all press that reset button, the four nice personalities disappear, but the powerful Mal does not. He falls into his subconscious. Mike roasts him. Him, and then kills him on his own. Mal's quite powerful. It takes some time to ruin him. Mal is the polar opposite of Mike. No, he's more like a perfect mirror of Mike. A merge of the personalities, but more focused on the defense than the result. An all-powerful evil. Mal's return to glory occurred when Mike forcefully suppressed his other personalities in season four. We can see him right there. It's because Mike has no idea what he's doing. He's just beaten up all of his other defense mechanisms, thinking he can succeed on his own, but he cannot. So Mal resurfaces, flickering back into consciousness. After killing Mal and sinking Wawanaqua, Mike exclaims how they should all come back for another season, and they all scream no. Mike is overconfident, and he's not learnt his lesson. Now that he's destroyed all of his safety, he's open for attacks, and could develop far worse conditions than additional identities. We don't see him after this in any season, but he's probably depressed and fearful. Even during the show when he first realized his personalities were gone in episode 3 of All Stars, he started to panic and feel lonely and scared. That fear will only fuel Mal, though. In the very end, Mike reabsorbed all of them and their abilities, including Mal, which would make you think he'd be fine. But now, there's no separation or memory loss. It's all him, and no disorder is designed to have a reset button, so 
This guy is screwed. Mal holds the bad memories. You can't say inferior without fear. Oh, that's clever of me to say. <laughs> These five alternate personas also seem to remind him of certain real people he thinks about a lot. A grandpa, an idol, the bullies, Steve Irwin, Indiana Jones, himself. But what kind of severe bullying done in what manner could cause such a horrific condition? A condition that fractures the meek to make them cope. Again, severe abuse. I've been referencing schoolyard bullying up until this point, but it would have to be really bad. In his audition tape, he says his psychiatrist highly advises against competing on total drama, obviously because of Mal's abilities. I assume this doctor was appointed to him by Juvie when they recognized his condition, but all of this trauma could have been the fault of his parents, or his teachers, or siblings. Really anyone could abuse him. Meek Mike. And out of spite for his condition, he has destroyed the only things keeping him sane, including the one that has saved his life over and over again. And now, Mike is far worse off. If you want to see more theories on total drama, I do plenty. I cover all kinds of cartoons. I've done Spongebob lots too. I've mostly been doing these deep diagnoses of characters lately, but I usually do fully-fledged theories analyzing evidence to solve grand conspiracies I've created. So click subscribe to stay up to date with this. I might do a follow-up to this video eventually. You can click the bell button too if you want to know when I upload the new theories. I upload every week, of course, usually on Friday at around lunch. I create these theories all by myself, so it really helps when you like and comment your theories and evidence below. In the outro, you'll see links to my social media, my Patreon, my merch, and my other channels, which are all equally as interesting as my theories, so check them out. Until next time, everyone, when I solve more total drama characters like Scarlet, I'm The Theorizer. Thank you.